Today, we're working with our friends at Heinz Toyota in Mankato, Minnesota. Okay, so on the driver's information screen, uh, you've got a 7-inch screen right here that you can manipulate and control. Uh, on the left, you've got, of course, a, a battery gauge, and it depends on how you're using the car. If you're in eco mode, charge mode, or power mode, you've got your engine uh, coolant, uh, engine temperature gauge here, and, of course, your speedometer and your uh, fuel gauge. We do have a check engine light on. That's because the battery was uh, deleted when we picked it up, and we had to charge it a little bit. So that's going to remain on and, and our check engine light will come on occasionally here, but that is not a big deal. All right, so the way uh, this is set up is all of your main menus are on the left right here. And so if I use the up and down arrows right here and the, the OK button and the back button, I can control everything in this system. So at the top here, of course, you have your economy, then you have driving support, then you have a media, and then down below that, you have got your energy monitor, and then all of your uh, safety systems, and then, of course, any alerts. So let's go back to the top. Oops, I went too far. Okay, up on economy here, you notice there's got three little dots on the screen. So if I use my left arrow, and again, I can get diff three different things. So I got my miles per hour and distance to empty. I've got um, fuel economy right here. And then over here, I've got, uh, if I've been driving for a while, it'll tell me the start time, how much, how, how much time I've been on cruise, and the stop time. Okay, if I go down one more down on this side here, then uh, over here I've got driving supports. And right now it just shows the compass. But if I do click on the lane uh, centering control, then you notice that I've got the little lines here. And of course, if I go hit the back button here, I get a much bigger screen here. So with my lane guidance here, and then my compass goes up in the corner, as well as my digital speedometer. All right, if I go down again, I get media. So for media, if you want to change the mode, you do need to use the mode button on the right side of the steering wheel. And of course, you can go through and change, including the rear entertainment system. Okay, then uh, if I want to, let's say I am on, let's go back to radio for a minute. So we'll just go to FM radio. Oh, all right, so... Uh, right now we're on the FM uh, station, and if I want to change anything, i got to switch to my right controls. And if I use the scroll buttons on the steering wheel, I can change stations. And then, of course, I can change the modes by hitting the mode button. So you're using both sides of the steering wheel for that. All right, coming back here, I am going to go down another one here and get rid of this check engine light here. We're going to go down here to energy monitor. And again, I've got three little dashes here. So I'm going to spin that. I get a tire PSI reading. I love the way it spins around, ghosts out the car so you can see that. Uh, the tires on the other side. Okay, I got one more dot here, and here I've got my pre-collision system, my parking assist, my rear cross traffic alert, and my blind spot monitoring. I, I, I love that diagram. All right, let's go down another one here. Okay, now here you've got all of uh, a lot of your safety systems at least. So if I press and hold on OK, that's going to allow me to change things like lane centering on or off. And all you do is click the OK button to change that. Uh, using the down air to go to steering assist. Again, click OK to turn it on or off. The alert for the steering wheel, uh, the sensitivity, um, and your sway warning on or off, and then sway sensitivity. Again, just pushing the OK button changes this. All right, let's use our back button here. And I'm, if, if, if I... Um, on the ones here that say on, so let's say this one, next one right here, if I do a click, just a very quick click on OK, okay, uh, you, you, it'll ask if you want to turn it on or off. Of course, I don't want to turn it off, so I'm going to leave it that way. Just press OK. But if I push and hold on it, then I get another menu where I can change the sensitivity. Again, it's just pressing the OK button that changes the sensitivity. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to blind spot warning. Again, a quick click on the OK button just turns it off. Quick click turns it back on again, but if you click and hold on OK, then you can change certain things. And again, you just press the OK button to change the brightness, and then you can go down here and click the OK button again to change the sensitivity. I'm going to go back again, and it's the same for all of these. So a quick push on OK turns it off push on it again, turns that back on, and a click and hold brings up 
a menu. So here's your parking assist volume. So if it's too loud for you, you can change that. We'll leave it on medium where it was. Okay, go over one more here. I've got rear cross traffic alert. Quick push turns it off, quick push turns it on. Uh, click and hold on the OK button, brings up. I can change the volume by pushing the OK button. All right, if I go over here to my right, now I've got my parking sensors and I can just do a quick on or off. Okay, now there, that's all it does. It says click OK to turn system on or off. If, if, if you can change something by clicking and holding, see it gives you two notifications here. All right, so this is the HUD display. This has a beautiful 10 inch HUD display and this is where you control everything for the HUD. So I'm gonna push and hold on OK and you can change the HUD brightness or position, the HUD uh, driving support, so what shows up in the uh, HUD display, and then the HUD rotation. So let's go to brightness and position. So by using the uh, left and right arrows, I can change the brightness of the HUD display. And then if I um, use the up-down arrows, I can change the position. And you just kind of have to watch up on the screen at the actual HUD display to see where it's at. Okay, we'll press the back arrow, go down, HUD driving support. So I'm going to push on OK. On the tachometer settings, you have a choice between blank, hybrid, or a hybrid system or tachometer. So you can change what you see there. I'm going to go back a button here. And everything else is an on or off. So do you want navigation to show up? A quick click on the OK button will turn it off or on. Your driving assist and your compass. Hit the back button here, and uh, HUD rotation. Now this will rotate the HUD a little bit, a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right, kind of tilt it. And you use your left and right arrows to do that. And depending on where you sit in your seat, this will be something you'll want to adjust at least once. So it looks correct to you. All right, let's go back. And we're gonna go back again. Okay, now this is your roadside assistance, so you can quick click turns it off, quick click turns it on again, push and hold on the OK button. You can change the notification method. You want it for excess speed or others. So if we push it for others, we can say we don't want any notification, we want only visual or visual and audible. Hit the back button here, hit the back button one more time. I can go to notification level if I push the OK button. Now here's where I get the warning. So if I'm one mile an hour over, it's going to warn me. Do I want it three miles an hour before it warns me or five miles an hour before it warns me? All right, we'll leave it where it is at one. If it were mine, I would change that, but uh, we'll leave it where the dealer had it. OK, now over here, if I push and hold, OK, I can change the volume here. Ooh, yeah makes a difference so you have quite a few different things that are going to chime on you in this car and it's nice to be able to change that let's go over one more here and i'm gonna push to hold now here you of course have got a bunch of different things you can do uh, change and then if you look at this little blue line at the top so if you you can use your up and down arrows and you can scroll through and there are more things down below all right so Let's take a look at the PSD. And of course, you can have, have left hands free on or off. You can have right hands free on or off. You can change the left PSD alert or the right PSD alert volume. And again, just by pushing OK, it'll change that. Okay. Uh, the power back door here, you can turn it on or off. You can set it to hands free on or off. You can open uh, adjust the opening height and you can adjust the volume that chimes at you when you're doing it. Hit the back button, rear seat reminder. All right, that can be on or off. Your tire pressure settings, okay? Yeah, you can set the tire pressure and you can identify each wheel in position and you can set the units that you use. So there, of course, is KPA, PSI, or BAR. We'll hit the back button twice and we'll go down again Scheduled maintenance. If you look in here, um, you have a choice to reset data or not. But anything that's uh, that's the car knows it should have done, then it will pop that up in that window. Let's hit the back button again. Then you've got oil maintenance, which of course you can uh, reset or not reset. So it'll remind you when your oil needs to be changed. 
Okay, we'll go over to the right one more time. And now we're here to the actual seven inch display settings. So if I press okay, or push and hold, you can change the language, the units, turn digital speed on or off just by clicking okay. EV mode on or off just by clicking okay again. And you can change some stuff in the eco settings. You can look at it as a hybrid system or just fuel economy. If I go down to media and click OK, you can turn that on or off. You can have that not even show up in your driver's information screen. Down here, of course, you've got uh, display contents and you can have the energy monitor on or off by pushing the OK button. Pop up displays. These are things that pop up in your dashboard to notify you of different things. Phone calls, that kind of stuff. So you can turn those on or off. Turn by turn navigation, telephone, audio operations. Uh, volume operations, we'll scroll down here. Voice control and brightness. So you can determine what you will allow to pop up in your dashboard on for notifications. All right, if I, I still got a, a little bit to go on this line on my right, so I'm gonna go down here. I can turn the multiple, uh, the multi-information display off completely if I just want a blank screen. By, now, if I want it back on, I just click the left arrow and it pops back on. And then I can go to default settings. If I wanna, maybe I messed something up and I just want it back to where it was, that's where I can do that. All right, let's hit the back button. And that um, is the end of the gears down here, but now we're gonna go down one more. And there really isn't much to show there, but if you have any warnings, then that is, if you have any warnings, then it, that's where they will, you can take a look at them. Now down here, you've got your outside temperature control. Um, you do have, it says your lane keeping assist is on. Um, gives you a little frost icon to let you know it's cold. You got your gear selector indicator. You got your odometer uh, right there. And of course, the odometer switch is where I showed you on the interior view, just to the left of the steering wheel. You can reset that. Now we're going to move over to the infotainment system. So the infotainment screen itself is nine inches. It is a premium audio system. It has 12 JBL speakers, including a subwoofer. It produces 1200 watts of power and it has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Amazon Alexa, Sirius XM full, uh, full access, HD radio and AM and FM radio. Uh, so it's well equipped and it includes navigation. So on the uh, on the outside of the screen, we've got some physical things and some lights happening. So first of all, you got your uh, passenger airbag indicator on or off. All right, so these lights here tell you if your rear passengers are buckled. So these two are for the uh, uh, second row seats, and these three are for the third row seats. So you can visually see if your passengers are buckled. All right, in addition to that, you have a power on off push and then a rotating volume. You have a tune and scroll uh, knob over here. And then you've got a physical home button, a menu button, audio, map, seek forward, seek backwards, a dedicated phone button, and of course your apps button right here. So uh, what's interesting is there's no back button anywhere, uh, but you simply just click on the menu button again that you wanted or, um, or the menu button or the home screen, wherever you were, and it brings you back to that starting point. So this is your home screen. Now the home screen gives you three different pictures. You've got your media, you've got your phone. So right now I have Apple CarPlay hooked up and you've got your navigation. And you've got some plus and minuses here and these have to do with the navigation. So you can magnify the view. You can also change your view which I think is just kind of neat that they add those buttons right in there. I happen to like that kind of view, so I'm gonna leave it there. Now, if I wanted to get into Apple CarPlay from the home screen, I would just click on Apple CarPlay and it becomes full screen, okay? So now I can, uh, I got um, my navigation. This is from my phone, by the way, okay? I'll go back here. Uh, and then of course I got my media that's playing. I can hit this for voice command into Google Maps or just the go button for it to go and use navigation. And then of course down here I've got, I can go to full screen maps, I can look just at my uh, uh, media or I can go straight to my phone. This is the button I'm using to go into that kind of three window look here. Now uh, if, there we go, I push it again, now I get all my apps showing up. And you notice I've got four little icons down here. So as I scroll through, every app that's available to work with this system shows up. 
Uh, I, I, I just, I really like the looks of this. I think it's really nice. All right. So that's the home screen an Apple carpet. Now, if I click on rear entertainment, it again brings it up full screen and I can adjust it from here. And we have a separate video where we're going to talk about the rear entertainment system and we'll cover all this at that time. And just like these other two, if I want navigation and I click on it, it becomes full screen. And then you have all of your controls here. All right. So the other sort of main screen view is the menu button. And that brings you to all of the apps that are on the car. And of course you got navigation, audio, phone, apps, Apple CarPlay, or it would say Android Auto if you had an Android Auto phone hooked in, info, climate, and setup, and then display. So let's talk about each, each one of these briefly. So of course navigation here, uh, that button will push, uh, uh, open up an area for you to search and put in a destination. Um, you can have destination assist, you can look at favorites once you've um, uh, programmed in several things. Um, recent, you can look at this, you can look at an emergency, and then an ad, if you want just with an address, a point of interest, or contacts. Okay? And then there's a quick home button once you enter in your home address. All right, if I uh, click on here again, I get rid of that home menu and the map is full screen, except for, of course, your zoom in and zoom out. And it tells you how many feet it is, and after a little bit, that disappears. If I click on this, then I can get the map mode. Uh, I can look at POI icons, speed limit is on, traffic information is on, and predictive, efficient drive. So if I turn that on, it'll tell me whatever route I've plotted, it'll tell me how economical it is compared to an alternative route. Okay, this is, of course, just a search button. And then... I can change how the map looks right here. Uh, so it's pretty responsive and uh, it, it, it looks, uh, it functions really well. So the screen itself is pretty responsive, which is nice. All right, let's go back to menu for a minute and let's go to audio. Now audio from here, you can select any mode. So you just go to source and there's all your modes. So this is the, the Apple CarPlay, that's my phone. You can reorder the icons by clicking on here, okay? And there is an arrow here, but it's not lit up. There is nothing extra there. But if you had some additional things that hap that were there, then those buttons, I think, I believe, would light up in a, in a blue and allow you to scroll to a different screen. So you can look at source, you can look at now playing, or you can go straight to sound, and you can adjust all of these things right there. Now, I am, see, there's no back button. Right, so I'm just gonna press um, audio because that's what I'm on anyways, okay? And I'm gonna go back to uh, sound and I get the same thing here, source. Um, so right now it's set to rear, right? So let's say I went back to source and said I want Apple CarPlay, which is my phone. Now it's showing me uh, what's playing and um, I can, of course, hit the sound and adjust that from there. It always shows up. My sources show up all the time. I can hit Apple CarPlay and it brings me back to sort of a full screen of Apple CarPlay, but the media mode. Okay, let's uh, go back to audio. All right, let's go to FM for a minute. So I still have my sources here. I can go back to, I have presets. I can take a look at these. And the, and the way to, to, to uh, set a preset is simply use the, you can use this dial here, it's one of the ways. Let's go to 90.3, I don't know what that is, but I'm gonna press on number one and hold. And there we go, now it's set. You have more off to the right, because you got this arrow lit up, and you can press and hold those. You've got quite a few, my gosh. There you go, 36 presets. Okay, if I go over here to radio replay, then I can hear um, things that were already broadcast. And I'm not exactly sure how that works. I haven't seen that before, but the idea is you're replaying something that's already been broadcast. You can look at a station list here. And again, you have AM, FM, XM, SXM, that shows all up right here. You just click on them to switch the different ones. Um, I'm not going to refresh that right now, but um, there we go. Those ones show up. And then you got these arrows that you can scroll through. Uh, you can click under options, okay? And you can set these on or off, auto pause, uh, Sirius XM uh, tune start, HD radio uh, AM on or off, HD radio FM on or off, and then scan uh, on or off. 
And then, of course, you have sound, which we've already seen a number of times. All right, so those all will we'll just will stay right there. Okay, so those are all the options that will show up here on the left in radio, whether you're in, in uh, AM, FM, uh, SXM, whatever. But all the menus show up here on the left. And then if you click on them, you can adjust the stuff on the right. I'm going to go back to the menu button for a minute. We're going to go to phone. You've got favorites, recents, contacts, keypad, and voicemail. Um, so let's click on the menu again, and let's look at apps. Now, there are no apps in here, but if you were to uh, using the Intune app suite, which you can download on your phone, um, there are some additional apps that you can add, and they would show up there. Okay, go back to menu for a minute. Apple CarPlay, we've already seen. If I click on info, now I can get info on eco, traffic incidents, weather, or vehicle alert history. So we'll, we'll click on eco. Now you can get a bunch of information here. Okay. And now for some reason in this screen, we do have a back button, which we haven't seen yet. That's interesting. You can look at traffic incidences on current road, nearby, predictive traffic map, or my traffic routes. Weather. Okay. And now you can see what that is locally. And then um, you know, the three day, six, 12 hour forecast, checked location. So you can change uh, the locations. You can add um, national or local, and then you can look at cities right here. Uh, and then you can also look at a weather map, which is really cool. Click on menu again. You do have all physical buttons for your climate control system, but you can control them on the screen too. And then if I click on options, then you have a sink AC and then the eco heat cool, which gives you better fuel economy if you choose those. Um, what I don't see in here is a way to control the rear from here. But if we can push this button up here, nope, still doesn't show up. So um, it seems to be that the, the only way to control the rear is through the physical buttons. Okay, um, let's go back to menu for a minute. Let's go to setup. And this is where you can change a lot of general things. Like under general, you've got clock, language. You can customize your home screen projection settings. That's when you're hooking a phone up uh, to show up through your screen like Apple CarPlay. You can turn this beep on or off if, if it annoys you. you got theme settings here. Units of temperature, units of measurement. I don't change the screen off or on. You can change your keyboard layout that shows up. Delete the keyboard history. Memorize keyboard history. And then, of course, animations, which is when you pop something up, it moves a little bit. Driver setting, delete personal data, software update, software update settings, and, of course, grace note, which is what allows, uh, one of the systems that allows pictures to show up when you're playing media on your screen. Software information, and then uh, the sensitivity level for the uh, auto, uh, audio, for the audio system. So... Basically, as you're, if you're going faster and it's a little noisier, the volume automatically increases. If you're going slower, it decreases. To try and balance out the volume to your ears as far as what you're hearing, and you got three levels. Okay, under audio, <coughs> you can look at common settings like do you want display cover art on or off? Do you want priority display of grace note on or off or rear system lock on or off? So you can lock out the rear uh, in, uh, infotainment system. Voice here, you can look at your uh, uh, voice command stuff all here. You can, you can work on training your voice recognition, uh, a tutorial on it, guidance, tone type, voice prompt interrupt. I mean, just lots of stuff you can do. Now I got a little arrow down here, so I'm gonna click that. You also says just some basic things. now. Like uh, other uh, Toyotas we've seen, if I go into maintenance, here you go. Here's the same screen we've seen in, in very similar, at least to like the Tacomas. Um, but you have all this stuff that you can, you can, you have to type it in, but you can keep track of just a ton of stuff. And then you can return a reminder on or off as to when it's time to change those things. Okay, you have some settings for navigation here. Areas to avoid, detailed navigation settings. And of course, this does have a Wi Fi hotspot, so you can turn that on as well. And it's a 4G LTE uh, Wi Fi hotspot. Okay, um, now there's one last button, and that is the display. If I click on that, I can do general things. I can turn this whole screen off, but then the minute I press a button, it comes back on. 
and I can do general things like the contrast or the brightness, and then you can kind of see what it looks like on these different screens. All right, and then you can look at a color bar to kind of show you what it looks like with in contrast, what the blues will look like, what the you know reds will look like, and so forth. And then you're back to map, so you can just see how that's going to look when it, you actually make the change. Okay, I'm gonna hit the back button, and then I have cameras. And here, it just gives you the color bar and you can adjust the contrast and the brightness. Okay, now, the other thing that this has is a bird's eye 360 view. So I do have a camera button that's located just to the left of the steering wheel. And if I click that on, you're gonna get a 360 with a ghosted out van going all around. You can see, I just love that ghosted out image. Now that'll keep spinning for a while and then it pops back out to more of a sort of a, a oval shaped overhead bird's eye view. If I click that button, it's gonna keep the car in the picture and spin around. So one the one mode you're kind of seeing where your sensors are, if there's any, your sensors are picking up anything, and the other one gives you a visual of overhead. Hey, you can always pause that automatically if you want. If I click the gear button here, I can change the body color setting. All right, so if you want to match your vehicle, that's ours right there. Now you've got a gray van that shows up. So that's kind of cool that you can adjust that. And of course, if you put it in reverse, you do get a backup camera with dynamic swivel guidelines. You get the 360 overview. And then here, this is this is the bird's eye view. If I click this one, now I get a little wider angle and the 360 disappears. And now I get a narrow angle. And again, I can turn my uh, dynamic guidelines on or off and change what they look like. Okay, now if you're uh, um, driving forward and pulling into a spot, if you click the, um, let's see if I can get this to work here. If I click that uh, camera view button, yep, you get the front view. Now it's a little different. There's a little blockage right here and it's sort of a curved view here uh, with the bumpers in the front, but you do have um, a, a nice front view. You can see right in front of your bumper, okay? Uh, I can make that auto so that when I, as I'm slowing down to, I think it's about under five miles an hour, that camera will automatically come on. Okay, and then I can go over here and I can change and I can have uh, guidelines on or off. Okay, and I'm not seeing those right now show up, but they should if you were actually moving. All right, and then of course you got the bird's eye view right there. So really, really nice bird's eye view system right there. So there, there was one spot here I want to show you one more thing. It says customize home screen. So if I click on that, I can change the layout. Right now I had three things, but if you want to change that, you can have four things show up, two things, three things designed this direction, or three things designed this way. So I'm just going to click on four to make a, a bigger distance uh, change. And I'm going to say, well, of course, um, let's say I want um, audio and I want audio to be there. And I want uh, then uh, eco, but I want eco to be here. So it you see it changed. Driver easy speak is right there. That's really a nice function to have showing up all the time. And I'll show you that in a minute, but that's how you change it. And then of course you have more options over here. You want just a clock or just the weather. So I'm gonna do the weather for a minute and I'm gonna put that fact right here. Okay. So now I'm gonna hit back, I'm gonna go to home, and now you can see I have got four screens showing up. One last thing, if you go down to theme setting under settings, you can change the color. So let's say I want everything to look red, there I go. I want everything to look blue, there I go. Uh, this is kind of a black look, and then this is more of a blue look. And I've got a few more things down here that I can of course change, and which we looked at earlier. Okay, so, uh, you know, in general, it's a, it's a very nice screen um, layout, but functionality-wise, it, it has tons of features, and um, it, it is really well laid out, and it's fairly responsive. So overall, it's a very nice system. All right, I hope that has been helpful. Thanks for watching.